Hey guys, it's Baban and here's a little tutorial on hands. Now these references are from a little pack that I've put together. I'll put a link in the description for you to go and download it. So either pause and go and download them now or do it afterwards. But it might be an idea during this to just um, look and compare to your own hand instead of drawing along. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do to pick out the shapes. This is how I learn from references and this is the same technique that I've used in my drawer and torsos tutorial how I go about it so I'm just going to do it as well with these now what I've got set out here is pictures of the back of the hand and of the palm of the hand with both the fingers together and with the fingers splayed out make a new layer get a nice red colour and I'm gonna pick out the shapes that I see so we're starting off with just these nice simple positions so you can see the sizes and the basic shape of the hands without having to worry too much about everything looking 3D. Now the first thing I want to point out is this shape here, the main shape of the hand. So if I just mark that out, trace it to figure out the shape of it. What I see a lot of people doing is instead of making this nice shape like this instead of this shape uh, people will make the knuckles sort of a straight line and depending on how stylized it is that could make sense but that's not really the shape that exists the shape that is there is the point of it, the highest point, is where the middle finger is. The lowest point is where the small finger is. And there's quite a harsh slope here and then there's a less harsh slope here. And we also want to plot out the shape of the fingers. And you can see they sort of mirror the same shape in that it goes up like this to the highest point on the middle finger and then goes down a little bit, a little bit of a softer slope and you can see this also appears in the knuckles. Now the overall size of the hand uh, is equal to a face so this would be the hairline this would be the chin and this is really useful if you ever get stuck because a lot of people will draw hands really really tiny so in comparison to a head that would be the size of the hand so we'd have like the eyes by here and try figuring out these sizes by putting your hand to your face but you know don't do it when anyone else is around you because you you will I'd fallen for that one before try moving your hand to different places and comparing it to sizes of other parts of your body so that when you're drawing something as a whole you can get a good grasp of relativity in terms of size but the size of the hand on its own uh, this this size from the knuckle to the bottom of the palm is about the same height as the knuckle to the tip of the middle finger. So it's pretty much the same. It's pretty much the same as when you draw in a figure in that the head to the crotch is the same length as the legs. And again, this is why I mentioned that size relativity and keeping it in mind is very important. A few other little things I can point out. Now I'm going to change the colour to a blue so it's a bit easier to see. Um, the thumb will line up with this first knuckle on the index finger. So if you pull, if you bring your hand out and you just check how your thumb will line up near enough to where that first knuckle is. Uh, the thumb can be split up into 
its own three knuckles. We've got this chunk here, this chunk here, and the tip. And I'll mention more about the thumb later because there's some other ways that people draw thumbs that don't really make sense or don't take into account the um, the way it moves or the amount of bends in it. Okay, so we're going to move on to this one, and we're going to we're going to pick out the same shapes and see how they move and stretch when the hands splayed out. Okay, so we'll go back to the rad. So we've got this same shape. We've got the highest point where the middle finger is, the knuckle, and then we've got a softer slope down here. The lowest point is down by the little finger, by its knuckle. Bring it down here to where the wrist is. We've got the bones of the wrist by here, and this patch here where it bends. comes around down here to the knuckle of the thumb thumbs knuckle is there and it comes down here got highest point where the end of the middle finger is and this size is equal to this size. These sizes are equal. So we got the smallest point around the finger, the little finger, and then we go up and around, up and around to where the middle finger is, and then down a little bit. The knuckles, highest point, lowest point, those join up in that arc, that arc again, that shallower arc again. And the thumb, we can see here with a shadow how it joins on here in this triangle shape. And then we've got the web of skin that comes around here, up to this first knuckle, and then up to the tip. And the tip joins up with the same curve that comes from the knuckles. Like that. Okay, so those are some of the basic shapes and proportions that will appear in a hand. We're just going to take a quick look at the inside or the palm side of the hand. So we've got the same, we've got the same basic shape here. We've got this knuckle of the thumb, it's down, round like this. We've got the same basic curve, but it's a lot softer on the palm side because there's a lot more padded skin on the inside because that's what we pick things up with. As you can see around here, the curve is a lot softer and you can begin to pick out these sort of shapes of where the fatty pads of the hands are. But we're going to pick those out later in a different colour. We want to just stay to picking out the main blocky shape without going into too many details. Okay. So, we've got the main shape here, and we're going to add in curves of the fingers like we've been doing. Here to here, and here to here. Uh, not exactly the same length on the inside because on the palm side, the pad of the hand is a little bit bigger because on the back side of the hand you see these 
little bits where the fingers split and there's webbing on the inside. So on the inside is where the webbing is. So it's a little, just a little bit higher. But they are roughly, you know, they're roughly about the same size. There's not too much difference, but there is a little bit. So that's just something to keep note of. So it might say come down to about here and there's like a, li there's a little bit extra. I'm going to carry on with this curve. And the insides of the knuckles. Then we're going to add the structure of the thumb this knuckle and up to the tip and the curve it joins up with the knuckles. Now I'm going to pick yellow to draw out these pads on the hand. You can see the way that the thumb joins up with the pads on the hands here. Uh, because there isn't much fat on the back side of the hand, it's more um, skin, so you can see the shapes of the knuckles and the tendons and a few more of the bones. There isn't much fat around here because it's it's all on the other side, but you can see the way that the thumb joins onto the hand in this sort of triangle shape. But when we flip it over, you can... You can still sort of see the triangle shape of how it how it joins on like this, but we also have this pad here, and we've got also this pad that comes around here, and this pad here, and you can see this in the shape of how the wrist joins here to this sort of shape. I'm just going to shade these in, show that there's more fat there. And these are the places that stay mainly as a bit more of a solid chunk, whereas this area in the middle where all the crease lines are is where everything contracts to so that everything else can squish smaller and come together. Okay, so we're just going to go over this again on the next one. So we've got the highest point on the middle finger knuckle and then we've got this softer curve here. We've got the lowest point down by the small finger knuckle and then this harder Move down here, come down to the knuckle of the thumb here, then down back here, and because it's on the inside we go around these areas of fat padding. We've got the wrist here and you can see where the creases are, that's where there's more movement and a bit more give. And this is where the more structured area comes in, and I'm just going to fill this in. Show that there's a bit more movement in there, it's not solid. Then we've got the highest point on the middle. Softer curve here. Longer curve here. And that will just join up this shape at the top for the fingers and because we're on the palm side of the hand there's this length and this length which is just a little bit bigger in comparison and then we have the thumb so we have this knuckle where we've drawn the join 
got this first knuckle and then we've got the tip and how that joins up to where the knuckles are and then we've got where the join of the thumb is in this triangle and lastly we're going to fill in where the pattern is there we go and just shade it in Now it's a good idea to go and do this with as many reference pictures as you can get. Take pictures of your own hand, find pictures of other people's hands, ask other people to get pictures of their hands if they've got maybe an interesting shaped hand. But um, don't, don't just use the references that I'm providing. And there's just a few more little things that I want to add in and mention. This knuckle of the thumb pretty much lines up with the curve of the top of the hand, just line that up there. Obviously it varies on how the thumb is moving but this is just really basically it near, it near enough lines up. And one more proportion thing that I want to mention, um, got the size of the hand, And we've got size of fingers, hand, and fingers. Everything sort of comes down into a Fibonacci spiral in that. I'll put that to that one. In that. The first chunk of the finger here is, well, the size of the hand is this and then the size of the first chunk of the finger is smaller and then the last two chunks are smaller and smaller again. And because the fingers are different lengths and they are slightly different shapes, um, at least on mine, some of the some of the parts of the finger are longer than others in between the bends. Um, it's best to just look at your own hand and figure it out, but that is the general rule, is that the first one's biggest and then it gets smaller and then smaller where the nail is. And just one more that I want to mention, I'm going to go back to the blue. It's about the thumb. Okay, what I see a lot of people drawing is they'll draw a thumb and it'll be this sort of five shape like this and they seem to completely forget about this middle section here because the thumb doesn't just um, bend straight over and join up with this fat here and I mean it, it does depend how simple it is but I see it with more stuff that's more going towards realistic rather than really cartoony stylized. Um, it's just something that people tend to forget about because either they um, get too ahead of themselves with the simplifying or they just haven't really looked at what they're trying to draw. So we've got the triangle here of where the thumb connects and then this up to the knuckle and to the tip. So the shape that you should be getting is more like that. Just to draw it really crudely. <laughs> How I try to remember it is that the thumb is in three chunks because um, most of the movement is in this chunk and this chunk but there is also a lot of movement in this one as well which people tend to forget about so we've got this chunk as one, this chunk as two and this chunk as number three 
or you can remember it as the third end of the thumb should not be able to touch the pad of the thumb. And the reason for people making mistakes with this, like I say, um, it could also be that they used to just draw in thumbs as one sort of swishy shape without much, um, without much structure to it. But there is still a structure in there, you've got to remember, and pay attention to how it bends. Here's some quick examples that I've done of sketches and the kind of thing you can do to study this. Uh, what you want to do with these is really kick out as many as you can. They don't need to be clean, they don't need to be perfect. Just kick out as many as you can so that you can solidify the proportions so that you can repeat them easily when you need to draw more complicated stuff which we're going to go into in the next episodes. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I'll put download links to the hand reference pack in the description along with links to where I post stuff and my commission information. There's going to be a part two and probably part three, maybe part four to this, so subscribe to see when the next one pops up. Also, hey, thanks for 2,000 subs. If anyone has any video suggestions they'd like me to do or tutorials they'd like me to make, then leave me a comment. I hope this helped. Bye-bye.